Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today, we will learn about creating a dependent drop down list in Excel. So, what is a drop down list, you ask? It is something which you do using a data validation operation in Excel. So, it'll give you multiple options and you can check and select one of those. So, if you have a query about what exactly is a data validation, we have listed the tutorial in the description box below. Please find it out and uh, that said, if these are the type of videos you'd like to watch, then hit that like and subscribe buttons and the bell icon to get notified. Just for a quick info, if you want to upskill yourself to master business analytics skills and land your dream job or grow in your career, then you must explore Simply Learn's cohort of various business analytics programs. Simply Learn offers a postgraduate program in business analytics from Purdue University in collaboration with Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. Through this program, you will gain knowledge and work-ready expertise in skills like prescriptive and predictive analytics, regression, classification, and over a dozen others. That's not all. You also get the opportunity to work with multiple projects and learn from industry experts in top tier product companies and academics from top universities. After completing these courses, thousands of learners have transitioned into a business analytics role as a fresher or moved on to a higher paying job profile. If you are passionate about making your career in this field, then make sure to check out the link in the pinned comment and description box below to find a business analytics program that fits your experience and areas of interest. Now, without further delay, let's get started with the demonstration for today's session, which is based on creating a dependent drop-down list in Excel. So now we landed onto our Excel spreadsheet. So what exactly are you trying to do, you ask? So I am trying to get this straight. Okay. Now we have a team, employee name, and count, right? Let's say you wanted to add the team details in the first column, employee name in the second column, right? So I have three teams. So T E A M D E V and uh, T E A M Ops, right? So this is how beginners do, right? And uh, if you want to automate this, you can do this using data validation. Similarly, let's say I am adding details of team developer and the employee name is, let's say Ivan. Okay, uh, so I want to add something like this into this particular data set or table. So let's uh, raise the column B. Let's try to figure out column A first. So quickly go to, yeah, select the cell first, quickly go to data validation, go to the data options and here you can see data tools, select this particular data validation option and here go to list and the source. So select this particular source, this is a source of our list. So press OK and there you go, Excel has automatically fixed the data for us. Now. The operation has been automated and I can directly select whatever the team I want. And uh, let's try to expand this to all the cells that we have in our table. So whichever you select, whichever the cell you select and you can have the options there to select the team. Now let's say I select team testing, right? And now here I want a similar data validation option which will give me the list of employees from the testing team right let's say you give me a solution which tells me to create a new data validation option uh, that suggests me to take the list from this particular cell or uh, column okay now let's say all of a sudden i change the cell let's say um, chris cortis let's say i add a chris cortis to employee name here and he is not attending the team meeting now or let's say he got a better opportunity and he left the organization is with a different organization now i want to eliminate this particular cell and all of a sudden i get team developer in the first row now does cortis belong to this particular selection development right no he doesn't belong to team development he used to belong to testing right so similarly if i swap the rows if not eliminate an employee if I swap the rows, then I should be getting this particular options, not from testing. So based on this particular cell, my data validation, which is present in the column B, should change. So that is exactly the meaning of dependent drop-down menu in Excel. So that is what we are going to do here today. 
Now for that, you might want to use something called as an offset. So before you create a data validation formula for this, let's go to the ring here. So here you will be choosing list. So instead of just giving a routine list, we will give a formula over here, which will select the list based on the offset or based on the cell which is present over here so we will be using the help of offset function over here so equals to offset so the reference this is the reference of the table of the end you know the entire data table which has the teams options the employee options right so this is the offset reference or the beginning cell uh, which i will be giving to my offset formula and let's fix that uh, cell by using the function code uh, function key f4 on the menu or uh, keyboard so we have fixed it now the rows now you want to extract cells from one row i mean you will be giving one option over here so you give one and now the columns so so far so good we don't know from which column do we select the data right we have three columns over here so we don't know from which column do we have to select the data so for that you might remember the index match function which is one of our tutorials in the excel playlist so you will be using the part of that index match function that is the match function to recognize which uh, column we have to select so type in match and press tab to select the function and now is your lookup value so based on this particular selection which is over the a2 right whichever uh, data is present here whichever team is present here based on that lookup value you will be selecting the column from these sections right if i give ops you should be selecting this column if i give testing you should be selecting this particular column right now fix that uh, column and cell using the function key f4 you can fix the column but the row number might change let's say a2 a3 a4 so based on the uh, position of the cell and the column you can change you know you can select it so lookup value is there now the lookup array so this is your lookup array let's fix it using function key f4 comma you need the exact match it's done so before getting on to the uh, columns and the height and width etc you need to understand offset takes things differently so index match and lookup they will count the columns as is one two three but in case of uh, offset function it will uh, you know uh, count numbers starting from zero so team devops uh, or team dev it counts as uh, column number zero team ops as column number one and team testing as column number three so you need to subtract one value from the number which match function gives you let's say the match function gives you one then one minus one zero so the offset function will understand i need to select the column zero which is team dev right now the next part of the formula height and width so what do you mean by height basically uh f column one two three four five six seven eight so here we are we have we are having 15 uh, number of employees in the developer team and uh, one two three four 18 number of employees in ops team and 12 number of employees in testing team so basically the height of the uh, column is nothing but the number of employees which are present in that particular column right so you can see we have um, colored a few cells in orange color which means that those positions are, are vacant or that particular team is populated with only limited number of employees now let's say i give the height of 50 here in the formula then the employees from ops team sean susan and mick are not going to be present when i select the ops right so in those scenarios what you want to do is you might you know just add uh, the whole uh, uh, you know the height of the uh, largest column the, the highest number of columns right so i have 19 as the highest right so i'll give 19 here and uh, how many number of uh, what's the width you want to select so i want to select one cell so my uh, input for that particular cell will be one but now this creates a chaotic experience to us what is that let's see now before we uh, enter the cell let's select all cut and we have the formula in our hand now go to i mean select the cell first now go to data validation tools 
and here you will be selecting list and here you'll be pasting the formula and press ok now okay let's not drag the formula at once we have a few more modifications to do so now here we have developer team developer so we have the list from developers right we have iron ls etc etc and when you go to the last one we have to be as the last one but wait a minute we have another selection an empty cell which is these we don't want this right so let's say you wanted to select uh, to be and by mistake you end up selecting the empty cell and now you don't have data right that is not supposed to be happening so how do you change it now basically what you're trying to do is you want to count the number of uh, employees present in that particular department and you want to give that particular exact count to the position where you have the column height so that your formula doesn't make a mistake right so that's exactly the thing what we want to do let's say we use count a function over here and select this and what you get is 50 and let's say i use another count equals to count a and i count the ops team members and you give me 18 and now another count and count the number of employees in testing that that will give me 12 so these are the numbers which i want to pass onto my offset function and that particular number should be present in the height so i can't uh, you know do it every single time it's again a manual task i want to automate it so how do i do it simple integrate the count a function along with the offset function that we just created so the offset function will tell the count function which team am i pointing to and how many number of employees are there in that particular column will be counted by the count function so that's all what we are basically trying to do now so uh, let's go back to the data validation okay escape let's go back to the data validation menu over here edit your data validation formula copy it equals to count a paste the formula you have now close the function remember copy the formula only until c don't copy equals to else you'll be finding an error now erase it completely now go back to your data validation menu and here where, where you have the 19 which indicates the uh, column height paste that formula you just copied and now it's okay right now when you uh, when you are on uh, data uh, team developer and press on data validation option over here you can see the last toby is the last one and you don't have any more blank cells so that's how you create a dependent data validation or a dependent drop down list in excel now the main task is to copy so uh, remember you just dragged the formula or data validation and there you have it right so uh, will the same thing apply for this particular formula no it will not okay it did but anyways uh, let's say we don't have a team developer over here then how do you do it so you can select the formula press copy and now select a new cell in the same column b just expand that selection to all the cells now right click go to paste special and now here select the validation and press ok so you have that validation selected over here now i have the people from developer let's say I, i'll select kelly kelly here and in this particular option i'll select ops now here in my drop down i can see team members from ops thomas mark ivan right so all the employees from um, the ops team and here let's say i select testing team and uh, i will have employees from the testing column kathy michael tim bobby chris right so that's how you basically create the dependent 
drop down menu in Excel. And with that, we have come to an end of this session on how to create dependent drop down menu in Excel. And if you have any queries regarding any of the topics covered in this session, or if you require uh, any of the resources like PPT, data sets used, and the formula list, please do let us know in the comment section below. And our team of experts will be more than happy to help you out as soon as possible. Until next time, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.